2 Kings chapter 5, verse 1. Somebody said, praise the Lord. 2 Kings chapter 5, verse 1, as you stand for the reading of God's word today. 2 Kings chapter 5 and verse number 1. We are going to read several verses, so hang in here with me. 2 Kings 5, 1. Let me see if I can get this back up here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. These iPads have a mind of their own sometimes. Amen. Second Kings chapter 5, verse 1, that's in the Old Testament. <laughs> if you got it, shout, I've got it. If you don't, just act like, you know, you, we've all been in that situation where we couldn't find it. trying to figure out where it's at, just, just act like we're standing there, you know. I've stood there many a time, you know, and then, the, you know, pastor in Habakkuk, and I'm in still at Genesis trying to find. <laughs> Come on, somebody, you know what I mean? Just acting like I got it, like I'm reading right along with him. I ain't going to let nobody know. Kind of fold the Bible in a little bit where the neighbor can't see I ain't got it. Come on now, y'all, some of y'all doing that right now. I, I got some of y'all. I got you right now. You trying your best. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> The pastor won't let me get by with nothing. Second uh, Kings 5, 1. Now Naaman, captain of the host of Syria, was a great man with his master and, and honorable because by him the Lord had given deliverance unto Syria. He was also a mighty man in valor, but he was a leper. And the Syrians had gone out by companies and brought away captive out of the land of Israel a little maid, and she waited on Naaman's wife, Naaman's wife, excuse me, and she said unto her mistress, Would God, my Lord, were with the prophet that is in Samaria, for he would recover him of his leprosy. And one went in and told his Lord, saying, Thus and thus said the maid that this is of the land of Israel. And the king of Syria said, Go to, go, and I will send a letter unto the king of Israel. And he departed and took with him ten talents of silver, six thousand pieces of gold, and ten changes of raiment. And he brought the letter to the king of Israel, saying, Now when this letter is coming to thee, behold, I have therewith sent Naaman my servant to thee, that thou mayest recover him of his leprosy. And it came to pass when the king of Israel had read the letter that he rent his clothes and said, Am I God to kill and to make a lie, that this man doeth send unto me to recover a man of his leprosy? Wherefore consider, I pray you, and see how he seeketh the quarrel against me. And it was so when Elisha, the man of God, had heard the king of Israel had rent his clothes, that he sent to the king, saying, Wherefore thou hast thou rent thy clothes? Let him come now to me, and he shall know there is a prophet in Israel. So Naaman came with his horses and with his chariot, and stood at the door of the house of Elisha. And Elisha sent a messenger unto him, saying, Go and wash in the Jordan seven times. And thy flesh shall come again to thee, and thou shalt be clean. But Naaman was wroth, and went away and said, Behold, I thought he will surely come out to me, and stand, and call on the name of the Lord his God, and strike his hand over the place, and recover the leper. Are not Abana and Farpar rivers of Damascus better than all the waters of Israel? May I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned and went away in rage, and his servants came near and spake unto him and said, My father, if the prophet had bid thee to do some, some great thing, would thou have done it? How much rather then, when he saith to thee, Wash and be clean. Then went he down and dipped himself seven times in Jordan, according to the saying of the man of God. And his flesh came again like unto the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. And he returned to the man of God, he and all his company, and came and stood before him and said, Behold, now I know there is no God in all the earth but in Israel. Now therefore I pray thee, take a blessing of thy servant. Can you say amen to the reading of God's word? Would you put your Bible in your seat and give the Lord a hand clap of praise? Come on, somebody. Oh, come on and praise him. Hallelujah. Most of us in this room today, if we got ready to go swimming this afternoon, we, we're probably pretty particular about where we would go swimming at. You know, I, I, I don't think most of us in this room are, are really up to swimming just anywhere. 
And most of the time when we are making our decision to swim in a certain place, you know, we try to find the cleanest water that we can find to swim in. You know, when we're trying to, you know, a, a lot of people like to go on vacation and some of these, you know, like just a few weeks ago, not too many weeks ago, we, we, we went to celebrate my, my nephew's graduation and we went to the Bahamas. And we went out into this water to do some snorkeling and man, it was the most, some of the most beautiful water I'd ever seen. You could see the bottom, you could see all around you, you knew what was in the water and you were comfortable swimming in that water and doing what you did in that water because everything was visible and you knew you weren't stepping on something you didn't need to step on. Come on somebody. So, so we, have, we have these certain waters that we navigate through and we swim in that we like to because they're, they're, they're waters that, are, that, that, that don't make us nervous. And, and, and when the water is muddy, it's usually not a desirable place to swim. We don't want all that. You know, a lot of people don't want to swim in, in dirty water and muddy water because they just don't want that dirt on them. Come on, somebody. Some people are nice nasty. Isn't that what they say? So you just don't want that. And that may be, but, but then a lot of people are afraid. The reason they don't want to swim in dirty water sometimes or muddy water is because they're afraid that they might get some type of ear infection or some kind of sickness from that water. So they're, they're nervous about swimming in it for that reason. But, but I believe the biggest reason that makes most of us nervous about swimming in water that is cloudy and dirty and muddy is that we don't know what's in the bottom of that water. We don't know what's swimming around under in our feet, and we don't know what we're stepping on. And so really what it does, it puts us in a place where we feel very insecure and we feel like we're very vulnerable because we don't know what we're in. And we don't know what we're swimming in. Can I, can I tell you that today? And, and, and so we, we find ourselves in that place of, man, I, I don't know if I want to do this or not. And we ease into the water and we're just not sure. And we try to stay away from that kind of water because I don't know what's down here and what's under here today. What I want to do is spend the next few moments sharing with you and preaching on the sermon that I have entitled, When the Water's Muddy. When the Water's Muddy. What do we do when the water's muddy? Most of the time, we try to avoid muddy water. We don't want to swim in that kind of water. Most of the time, we stay away because we don't know what's in there. Come on sometime. But can I tell you today, ladies and gentlemen, that there's going to be those times in your life, in your spiritual walk with God, when you're walking with Him, that God is going to ask you to get into some water. He's going to ask you to step into some water that you don't know what's in the bottom, and you don't know what's swimming around your feet, and you don't know why you're there and it's a very vulnerable place but you just got to do what God wants you to do so here don't you know that it had to be a nervous place for 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 Naaman because Naaman not only is is this water water that he don't know what's in it but Naaman's got a skin disease Naaman's got leprosy and I, I don't believe if Naaman went to the doctor that the doctor would prescribe, I need you to go down to the muddiest river you can find and dip seven times. I don't think he's going to write that prescription now for a skin disease. Come on, somebody. And, and, and so you can imagine how Naaman is feeling. He's feeling very nervous about going down to this muddy water and dipping in there because he thinks that this could make matters worse. But you see, I need you to understand today that there's a reason for it. In 2 in, in second Kings 5, 12, as you look at verse 12, this is what the scripture says. Naaman says, Are not Abana and Farpar rivers of Damascus better than all the waters of Israel? That water's more clear over there. That water over there probably has some healing qualities in it. Wouldn't it be better for me to go dip over there? May I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned and went away in a rage. So the, the, the question is, why with all of this other good water around, why in the world did Naaman have to go to the muddy water? With all these other rivers that would make a whole lot more sense to dip in, why this river? And I'm going to share with you a couple of reasons why I feel like he had to do that. Verse 13 says, And his servants came near and spake unto him and said, My father, now watch this. 
if the prophet had bid thee to do some great thing, wouldst thou not have done it? How much rather then when he saith to thee, wash and be clean. So what, what, was, what were the servants doing? The servants were challenging Naaman in an area of his life. They said, if God had told you to do this thing that you really desire to do, he, you'd do it, wouldn't you? In other words, naming God's, God then, isn't he? Something that you have no problem doing. Something that is, that is easily, you know, you can, you can distinguish where you're going, what you're doing. You're in control of the situation. And, and maybe it's even something fun that God would ask you to do. You're okay with that, and he's God then. But they're, they're challenging him at his level of faith. See, this is what I need you to understand. It's, it's easy sometimes, y'all, to trust God and to praise God and to honor God and to do what God wants you to do as long as you are in control of the situation and you know everything's going, how it's going to turn out. It, it, it's okay to, you know, you can praise God when everything's in line and, you, and, and everything's clear to you, but it's in those moments when you don't understand where you are. And see, some of you are in the muddy water today. Some of you are standing in the dirty water today. Some of you are in a dirty situation and you don't know how you ended up there. But can I tell you today, it don't change the fact that God is God. He's still God. God's God in muddy water as well as, as, well as clear water. And God's got something for you. You see, here's the thing I need you to understand. Really what the servants were saying to, to Naaman is, Naaman, it's a trust thing. It's a faith thing. Do you, do you trust God even in muddy water? Do you trust God that, that, that God would ask you to do something like this that would make you feel uncomfortable? You see, when we talk about faith and we talk about trust, one, one, one of the most powerful verses of Scripture about faith is, is a very short verse of Scripture, and it says that, that, that we walk by faith and not by sight. Faith means that I, I, don't, I don't judge what's going on in my life right now about, by my five senses. I'm not judging what God is doing in my life by what I smell or what I hear or how, if it tastes good, if it smells good, if it looks good, if it, if it sounds good. I, I can't base it on that because sometimes the places that God has you in life, sometimes the situations you're in, it, they don't smell real good. They don't look real good. They don't, it, it don't sound real good to you and it's not tasting very good to you right now but you just got to trust God some people are having a hard time advancing to the next level of where God's wanting to take them is because they, they can't get control of things and they can't have the faith that they need to have on this level and God's never going to release faith in your faith in your life without a test God's, God's never going to advance you to the next level until he's tested you on this level. You might as well get ready for that. And if you're not ready for test and you don't want to be tested and you're not really, and you're not, you don't want to be, you don't want to trust God and you don't want to have faith in God. Come on somebody. Let me tell you something. God's a jealous God and God's, God's this kind of God that he just wants you to know that, 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 that he wants to know that you trust him and you believe him and that you let, no, he's got everything under his control. And that he's working every situation in your life for your good and for his glory. No matter what it looks like. It's a, it's a trust thing. It's a faith thing. Can God trust you right where you are? Can, can God trust you when things are not going good? Can you trust God when things are not going good? What kind of response do you have for God? You know what I mean? Let me tell you something, y'all. It's easy to shout when, you met, when your pocket's full. It, it's easy to shout when you and mama are getting along. Come on now. It's, it's easy to go when the kids are doing everything you need to do, man. You in church and you're shouting and dancing. But God is looking for a praise from somebody when they don't know what in the world is going on their life. Right, right. You see, God's, let me tell you something. You think I don't know where you are, but I'm looking at somebody today. You don't understand the situation you're in right now. You don't understand this season of your life. But can I tell you that before you leave here, you're going to know today that the most powerful revelation that you can have is a revelation of the mud hole. You got to look at somebody next to you, smile real big and say, you got to get a revelation of the mud hole. 
It's the greatest revelation you'll ever get in your life is when God reveals to you what happens in the mud hole. What happens in that place of insecurity, that place where you are vulnerable. Hello, somebody. You see, it, 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 some of you are going to hang out where you've been hanging out, and you're never going to see glory. If you just want to be where you are, and, 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 and you, you know, mediocre is good for you, and mundane is good for you, and the every day, every day is good for you, and you don't want to do any better, see any better, whatever, just hang out right there. You see, the, the ones that God elevates are the ones that God can trust to go through a situation. The ones that God can trust to, to, to walk through a valley. You see, this is what I need you to understand. A lot of you are in this room right now praying that God will get you around the mountain when God put the mountain in your way for a reason. To see, to make a mountain climber out of you. Come on, somebody. Y'all yeah. ain't going to never go anywhere till you learn how to climb a mountain. God wants to see what you're made of. God wants to see if you'll look at that obstacle and say, no, I'm going to go the other direction. Or if you're going to take that thing head on and say, hey, I don't know why it's here. I don't understand. That thing, that stone, that stumbling block that's in front of you. God is looking for people who know how to turn stumbling blocks into stepping stones. People that can step up on their situation and say, hey, I don't understand what I'm going through right now, but I'm going to give God my breast praise and I'm going to do everything God's called me to do because God is trying to do something in this situation. I'm in the mud hole for a reason. Woo! Touch three people around you right now and say, I got to get a revelation of the mud hole. God's trying to reveal something to me down in this muddy water. In the clear water, you can see your way. In the clear water, you know how to get there. But when you're walking in the muddy water, you got to walk by faith and not by sight. You don't know what's down there. You don't know what to expect the next moment. But God's got this thing if you let God have it. Woo! Hallelujah! Mm -hmm. God's trying to do something. God's trying to release something. God's trying to make something happen in your life. If you'll just let God do it. So the first thing I need you to understand is that for Naaman, his servant said, Na Naaman, it's a trust thing, sir. It's a faith thing. You mean you'll do what God tells you to do that you're okay with, but you don't trust him enough to do something that you don't know nothing about. That's what God's waiting on. That's the thing that's sitting in the way in between you and your elevation right now. You and your next level is you being willing to do what God tells you to do no matter what happens. No matter if you can, you can decide, you know, if everything has to be under your control, then God ain't working in that situation because that ain't how God works. If everything has to be clear to you and, has to, and, and if everything in your life before you make a move and before you do anything, you have to be able to rationalize it with your human finite mind. God says, uh -uh, I don't work like that. God said, I'm going to do big things that's going to blow your mind because I'm going to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you could ever ask or what? Imagine, <laughs> even in your wildest dreams. See, what God's about to release in you is bigger than you so God can't depend on your senses to get it done well I just I don't know I don't know if I want to I don't know if I want to do that pastor because I don't know it just don't feel right huh it don't feel right that just don't it just don't it leaves a bad taste in my mouth I can go ahead and tell you that anything, just as it is in the natural, so it is in the spiritual. Anything that's good for you most of the time don't taste good. Come on, I love fried chicken, but it ain't good for me. It tastes good, but it ain't good for me. It's better grilled. Come on, somebody. 
I like ice cream. I like Butterfinger blizzards. Come on, somebody. I can't get no help up in here. I like red velvet blizzards. I like a cotton candy blizzard. They release them in the summertime. Come on, somebody. I'm going to pray to God that I can stay away from them for a little while. But somewhere along the line, I'm going to find one because it tastes good. But I've realized that the things that are best for me are the things that don't taste good. God is taking somebody through a situation right now to eat some stuff that don't taste good, to take you some places that don't feel good, to take you some places that don't smell good. Things don't, don't sound right right now, but we know that God's working. You got to learn how to trust him. Mm, I feel him in this room right now. You got to learn how to trust him. Uh -huh. I thank you for all this help, but I ain't done yet. See, listen. Listen to me. Listen. Listen. Not only now this, I'm about to blow somebody's mind right now. Not only is it a trust thing and a faith thing, that's not the only reason you got to dip in the muddy water. That's not the only place, reason you find yourself in the muddy water, when you're in the muddy water. That's not the only reason. Another reason he had to dip in the muddy water. Now watch this now. You got to take notes. You taking notes? Another reason he had to dip in the muddy water was because it didn't make any sense to See, it got quiet in the first service like that, too. Some of y'all looking at your neighbor. Did she write that now? So, we supposed to say, it don't make no sense, too? I ain't know if I, lie. I don't know about that. No, that's what I said. Write it down. The reason you, you, he had to dip in the muddy water was because it did not make any sense to dip in muddy water. That's the whole reason he had to do it. What, Pastor? Now, let me, let, me, let, me, let me tell you what the scripture says. It, it, it made no sense for him to do that. You see, like I said earlier, it, it wouldn't be the prescription from a doctor to dip in muddy water with a skin disease. But let me show you what the scripture says in 1 Corinthians chapter 27 verses, uh, or 1 Corinthians 1 verses 27 through 29. Watch this. But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world. What? Now, 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 we're going to read this Bible. Don't, don't, don't y'all, don't y'all leave on me yet. Stay right here. Pop your ADD pill and watch your pastor. Watch this. Look here. But God hath chosen. God hath chosen. Everybody say God hath chosen. It's God's choice. God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. Things that don't make no sense. <laughs> You see, some of you are not where you need to be in God because you're not willing to go to the places that don't make no sense. You're not willing to hang out in an area that you can't explain. But that's the, see, this is what you need to understand. The place that you're at, you chose it. But according to this scripture, the place that God chooses is the place that don't make no sense to you. Why would God do that? He did it. Watch. But he hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. Weak things of the world. Next verse. And base things of the world and things which are despised hath God chosen. Yea, and the things which are not to bring not to not things that are. That no flesh... Everybody say, no flesh, no flesh. should glory uh -huh. in his presence. Right. Now, this is what you need to understand in all your theology. That God had the prophet Elisha to tell Naaman to dip in Jordan on purpose. See, the biggest problem you're going to have with the revelation of the mud hole is making yourself believe that God chose this. Y'all better hear me. You see, you, you and, 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 and all of your name it, claim it, blab it, grab it. You and all your faith and, 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 and all the positive things that you speak. 
and all that kind of stuff. And the Word of God teaches us to do that. You know I teach that. Proverbs 18, 18 21 says the, the power of life is in, is in uh, 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 life and death is in the tongue. 1821 Proverbs. I preach that. But, but see, this is what you, you, you got to understand. The Bible doesn't say that because you walk by faith, you're never going to have to go through anything. The Bible said, in this life there will be tribulation and there will be trouble. But, but, but here's the greatest revelation you can ever understand is that in this life as a child of God, there will be trouble and there will be tribulation and it will be the choice of God. Take it back. Take it back. Take me back. Take me back. Go to verse 27. But God hath what? The foolish thing. Foolish things are what? Things that don't make no sense. You see, you'll have a greater revelation. And you'll give the devil a greater fit. When you can realize that you are go, you're walking through a troubled area. Some muddy water. And God chose that place for you. Now I'll let you chew on that one a minute. Huh? Because see, that ain't the way we're geared to think. Oh, God did God's God showed God showed it for me. God, you know where I'm at? I mean, God said, God said, God, let me tell you something. The scripture says you count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. For the trying of your faith worketh. Yeah, uh-huh. All right, that's the word. Come on. Okay. If, if the trying of my faith is working something, patience, endurance, and patience and endurance are something that God works in me so I'm prepared for the next level. Okay, so if, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, for the trying of your faith is working something. Now you can sit here and try to work around that all you want to, but the Bible just told you that God is working in your trouble. That the trying of your faith, God is allowing so he can prepare you. You you ain't going to be no good on that level if you can't handle this level. If you can't pass this test. If you can't go through this thing. If you can't handle <laughs> that, 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 that $1,200 a month, <laughs> then God can't trust you with $12,000 a month. He got to know what kind of faith you got with $1,200 before he can release $12,000. So here it is. You need to understand God allows things to happen on purpose. You know what? In it, he does it. He allows it. You see, let me tell you something. Until you can get a revelation of the mud hole, you'll never be successful in God. Because see, you you always get stuck there. Because somebody made you believe that because you're in the mud hole, you ain't saved. Because you in the mud hole, you ain't right with God. Because you in the mud hole, you've done something wrong. That ain't what my Bible said. My Bible said I'm standing in the mud hole because he's working something in me. I'm here. I'm in this place on purpose. I'm here for a reason. Uh, but see, all you, but, but your whole thing is, your whole theology is, I, well, I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm just, you know. I can't, I can't believe God's forsaken me. God's abandoned me. I can't believe, I can't understand why I'm here. I'm a, what did I do wrong? I must have done something. I don't, I mean, my Lord, what did I do? I, I, and, and you're just constantly confused. And God said, well, girl, what's wrong with you? The servant said to Naaman, what did he say? He said, Naaman, you can trust God with great things, but God ain't God when you go through trouble. You can trust God to tell you to go down here and enjoy this, but you can't trust God when God tells you to do something that don't make no sense. He's chosen something. Go back to where I was. But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. For what? Next thing. That no flesh 
yeah, go, go back. That no flesh should glory in his presence. You see, God, God intended for Naaman to go and dip in muddy water so that when the healing came, y'all ain't ready, so that when the healing came, nobody can walk away like some of y'all do when God blesses you. When you get a financial blessing and, I mean, and it rains on you good, you're going to say, you know, somebody's going to say, boy, the Lord was good to you, wasn't it? And you, you all like, well, y yeah, well. But you know I work pretty hard. Come on, I can't get no help in here. Uh -oh, but, but girl, I put in overtime hours for that paycheck. <laughs> Man, I've been sweating over that thing. You know what I'm saying? Come on. I, I'm, but but I'm, let me tell y'all something. I came here to preach today. I, I, I'm, I'm telling you, somebody, God's speaking to somebody right now that you are in a position and you've been taking some of God's glory and you've been giving it to somebody else to decide who it belongs to. See, this is what you need to understand and this is what you should have been saying. Lord, I woke up this morning and I realized that I would not not even be breathing if it wasn't for you. I couldn't put one foot in front of the other if it wasn't for you. I couldn't move my arms. I couldn't move my legs. My heart wouldn't be beating if it wasn't for you. No, I'm not going to take any of your glory. I'm going to give it all to you. All the glory belongs to God. He had to go dip in the muddy river because then nobody could leave and say, well, you know, he went down there and, and, and he dipped in those healing waters. Huh? And that's, that's why he's better. God said, no, huh? -uh. Send him down there in the, and, and make him dip in something that there won't be any question. <laughs> that when it goes down, and let me go ahead and tell you something about, about God. God is Jehovah Jireh. He's Jehovah Shalom. He's Jehovah Nisi. <laughs> Come on. He's Jehovah Rapha. And he is Jehovah Nicotine. Some of y'all looking for that one in your Bible, you can't find it. Jehovah Nicotine. That means God does everything in his timing. You see, and here, here's what happens. That this is how this is this is the people that God can promote. Oh, see, somebody that see, I got about 50 people in here. Your ear, I got your ear right now because you know what? You ready? You you sick and tired of hanging out where you've been hanging out? You sick and tired of that mundane place you've been? And you say, I don't know. I don't care if he wants to go. I don't care if Sally wants to go. Freddie wants to go. Shanika wants to go. I don't care. I don't care if they want to go or not. I'm telling you right now, I'm going where God said I'm gonna go. I, I'm gonna get what God said I could get. So I'm, I'm here in what the Lord says. You see, but this is what I want you to know. You'll pass the test and the real test comes when God tells you to go down to the muddy water. Come on, somebody. And get in the muddy water and like it. You see, it wasn't enough. Watch this. It wasn't enough that God told Naaman to go and dip in that muddy water. You see, this is what I need you to understand. If you had been here Wednesday night, I could really help you right now. Because Wednesday night I preached a sermon entitled, The Attitude of Obedience. The Bible said, the willing and obedient shall eat the good of the land. The word willing there deals with your attitude. You see, it's not just enough to be obedient to God, but you need to be happy about it. Can I, can I give you an illustration? It, it, it's like a child. Amen. I, I, I appreciate it, but I, I, I don't need anything right now. Thank you. Amen. You, you're doing a great job, though. I just don't need it right now. Amen. Watch this. Listen. Listen. It's not, you, you know, it, it, it's your attitude that means something. The Bible, remember the, we said the Bible says that the Lord loves a cheerful giver? The Bible doesn't say the Lord loves a giver. He loves a cheerful giver. The Lord don't want you to bring your offering to him saying, my God, if I'm, what am I going to do about eating this week? I, I ain't going to have no groceries. I ain't going to be able to pay the car payment. I got to give God my Lord. Give me, all right, take everything I got, God. Huh? You hear me? You see, we treat God just like our kids treat us sometimes. Boy, I need you to go in there and clean your room. And they go in there to clean their room, but they are not willing to clean their room. 
And they're walking all the way down. My God, I, I, th I thought making up the beds and washing clothes was mama's job. I can't believe it. Mama going to make me go in here and make up my bed and pick up these clothes. Where, what do I got a mama for? I can't even believe this. I mean, this is slavery right here, just uh, taking advantage of your children. I'm telling you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> huh? Come on. And that's the same way we are with God. God tells us to do something, and we really don't want to do it. Well, well God, I really don't want to. I'm going to go to church this morning, but I sure don't feel like it. And I'm going to pay my tithes like the pastor. He get a break because all you want to do is talk about money, talk about money, talk about money. Talk. I'm all up in your grist today. You know I am. Talk about money, talk about money. Well, I'm going to get down and pray, but I don't feel like praying. I'm going to turn the television off, but I sure want to finish the rest of this movie, God. I'm telling you, I'm sacrificing a lot for you, Lord. But see, sometimes you're going to find yourself in the same position that Naaman was in when God said, go and dip in the muddy river, but don't dip one time. <laughs> see, some, some of y'all good. With, let me go ahead and tell y'all about y'all. If y'all had a Naaman situation, second time down, up, and you out. Uh -uh. I'm gone, God. I ain't doing this. Because you go down and you're all in that stuff and you come up and that stuff, that what man, that water's all over you. That water stinks. Come on, somebody. It mud's all over you. My God, you got this in there. And you come up out of that water and you say, and you go to look and God ain't done nothing. Because see, y'all microwave Christians, you want something in about 30 seconds. And you go down and you come up and, and, and the second time and you look and there still ain't nothing down there. And you go down the third time and sure to God when I come up the third time because I'm ready to get up out of here. And you look and there still ain't nothing. And you go on down the fourth and the fifth and the sixth time and you ain't got a sign of anything. But see, listen, what I need you to understand is there is one dip in between you and the blessings of God. One more dip that's going to take you over the top and you want to quit right here. One more dip. Touch somebody say one dip. one dip. One dip. Don't get too excited. We got some dippers in here now. That ain't what I'm talking about. Amen. One dip. One dip. <laughs> some of your bottom lips swole when I said that. Amen. Listen. One dip. One dip. Away from the blessings of God. And can I tell you this? Y'all ain't going to hear this. Y'all didn't come today to hear this. Sometimes you got to do what God tells you to do simply because he said, do it. There ain't no other reason. In this modern day, of modern psychology and all of this counseling that we do with children. You know, everything now, you got to talk it out. You know, everything now is, you know, <laughs> explain everything. You know, you, you tell a child to do something, he get all, get this attitude where you look you in your face like he owns the house and say, why? Back in the day, somebody was going to jail. Not now. Oh, come here, little Johnny. Come here. Come here to daddy. Come to daddy, son. Come and sit on daddy's lap and sit here. And let me say, let me just explain this thing to you. Well, little Johnny. <laughs> the reason that I need you to do this, son, and him looking at you like, Huh? The reason I need you to do this. No, you see, I'm going to go ahead and tell you. And I may get in trouble for this. And for all, anybody that don't like what I'm about to say, then, you know, close your ears. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and tell you. I still believe in some, in, in some situations in the good old day. Why? I believe in the good old day. Why? Where you get right up on the end of their nose and say, Call thy said so. That's it. 
You ain't got to have another reason. I'm daddy. This is my house. You don't own this house. I own this house. I'm in control here. I know what it is. Now, can I tell you, some of you, your daddy is standing on the end of your nose, your spiritual daddy. And he said, the only reason you need to do it is because I told you so. And you ain't going to pass the test until you can do it because that means you completely trust God. That God, you see, your insecurities are holding you back from your blessings because you won't do what he says he tells you to do. At the moment he says do it, it says that you don't really trust him. You're trying to, you're trying to control what the outcome is going to be. And God said, I don't need you to control the outcome. I got this. I got this. I'm in control. I'm in control. I need you to trust me, says the Lord. So what you have to do is, is your attitude and how you respond means a lot to God. Now watch this. Watch this, and I'm bringing it to a close. We're almost done. 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 12 and 13. Notice what it says. Dear friends, don't be surprised. New Living Translation. Don't be surprised at the fiery trials you're going through. Huh? Don't be surprised at the fiery trials you're going through. Your attitude. Don't, 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 no, 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 no. As if something strange were happening to you. Instead, watch this now. Instead, be very glad. What does that mean? Let me give you the revelation of that. You go into the mud hole, be happy about it. You see, you got to be happy about it. It's how you respond there that's going to make the difference. For these trials, watch this now. These trials make you partners with Christ in his suffering. So that you will have the wonderful joy, watch this, of seeing his glory when it is revealed to the world. You go into the mud hole. When you get there, you got to like it. And you got to respond the right way once you get there. Because it's going to be in the mud hole that God reveals his glory. You're not going to see any glory as long as, you're not, as, you're, as you are unwilling to. To walk out what God's called you to walk out. It's only the ones that's, that are willing to walk through it that God's going to reveal it to them. Now here's where we're going to close and I want you to watch this. In 2 Corinthians 12, 9, New Living Translation again, it says this. Each time he said, my grace is all you need. Now watch this. My grace, my unmerited favor, blessing, power, anointing. You didn't earn it. Don't have anything to do with you. Not about you at all. All about me. What's that? Each time he said, my grace is all you need. My power. Now this is, don't, don't, don't miss this church. My power works best in your weakness. My power works best when everything's going good for you. When you're on top of the world. When the blessings are flowing into your life. Are we aware? In your weakness. So he said, so now I am glad to boast about my. Notice what he said. I'm glad to boast about what? About my weaknesses. So that the power of Christ can work through me. He said, my power works best when you're weak. And Paul said when he's writing, he said, the power of God works best in me when I'm weak. So he said, now I'm finding myself in the place where I am boasting about my weaknesses. Where I am admitting, God, I can't live without you. When I'm saying, Lord, <laughs> listen, show up and show out in this trouble that I'm in. In other words, I am learning to enjoy my afflictions. What? Count it all what? 
when you fall into diverse temptations. What am I doing? I'm learning to deal with these. My attitude is right now. Yes, I am in the mud hole. Yes, I'm in the muddy water. When I'm in the muddy water, what do I do? I realize that it's in the muddy water that God is working something in me. So I recognize the muddy water is not a play, a negative place. It's not a place where God's trying to kill me. It's not a place where God's trying to destroy me. But it's a place where God is trying to develop something in me to take me where I need to go. You see, the reason I told you you had to have a revelation of the mud hole is when you get a revelation of this, of this place you're in and, you, and that revelation is, hey, this is where God's doing it. That's when, and, and, and you don't, the Bible said, remember, don't, don't, act, don't, don't act surprised, don't act strange about it. You see, in other words, I got this. I know what God's doing here. Your attitude and the way you act determines the outcome of that situation. Because what you do is you say to the devil, hey devil, <laughs> listen, this ain't a bad thing, this is a good thing. I need, I need you to understand God working something out for me right now. I'm, I'm here on purpose. I, you know, you, you, you may think I'm down, but I, oh no, I'm getting ready to go up. So you don't, you don't realize I'm just working out right now. I'm in, I'm in the place where I'm trying to build up something right here. Oh, I'm, God's preparing me for some big thing. And so I'm going to pray. If, if, if the enemy can see you shout louder in the muddy water than you did when you were in the clear water. That's when, the, 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 that's when you pass that test. When you got a praise for God that outweighs any other praise that you've ever had because you trust him. Huh? When you can praise him. When they come get the car. They take it. When they come and, and, they, and they foreclose on your 2017 Lexus, Mercedes, or, you know, or, 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 or BMW. If you're driving one, I'm not prophesying over you. God's going to let you keep it. It's going to be all right. Amen. Some of y'all don't fall out of your seat right now. Amen. But listen. <laughs> but if they come to take it, and then you find yourself, <laughs> you, you, you find yourself having to drive a Yugo. Come on, somebody. Driving, you go huh? And it barely runs, but it's getting you somewhere. You drive that thing and say, God, you're just as good in this you go as you were in that car. I'm having some time, but Lord, I'm going to praise you anyway. And you shout all the way to church. And the devil's shaking his head saying, what's wrong with that girl? Don't you know they took her car away from her? And then when they foreclose on your house and you have to move back in that trailer. Don't you know my, 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 don't you know she ain't where she used to be? I can't understand this. I can't figure this all out. And don't you think God won't test you? A couple of weeks ago, I was, sitting, I was sitting at a red light. Me and my wife. And my middle son sitting at a red light, minding our own business. I mean, really, I wasn't doing anything wrong, obeying the laws of the land, just talking to my family, sitting at a red light still. And this girl comes roaring into the back end of my 2016 black Chevrolet Tahoe LTZ. Come on, somebody. A vehicle God bless me with. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Uh, and we love, we have to have that Tahoe because I'm going to tell you something. It's the only way we can go to town with all of our children and, all of, and bring back all of Melissa's shoes all in one thing. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Girl know how to go to a shoe sale. She can, I mean, she can find that one pair of shoes that's 75% off of 50% already. And buy that $200 pair of shoes for, to, for $13.99. Amen. <laughs> Come on now. And, buy, and, and about 14 pair of them right here. And don't, don't worry, baby. I got them all, all. All 14 pair of them for $100. I got them all right there. Once you pay for one pair. Amen. And I'm like, okay, girl. I done learned how to deal with this. Come on. I got this. I got this. About 14 people walking out of the store with us. Amen. I'm just playing with you. But, but, but here I am sitting and... and, and Minding my own business, somebody runs in the back of my car. 
and mess up my car. I'm like, what in the world? I get out of there and then, and then her insurance company is responsible for renting me an a automobile, right? So, so they send me down to Enterprise. I'm walking up in there. First, first dilemma is, see, here I am sitting at one moment, everything going great, and then all of a sudden, everything's topsy-turvy. Because I walk into Enterprise only to remember and realize that I had just had a birthday and my license had expired and I had not renewed my license. And this man looking at me across the counter saying, you can't rent this car. We can't give you this car. You got to have, you got to do something else. So I get on the phone. My wife had dropped me off at the place and left. <laughs> Cause I thought I was going to have a car to drive off. So I'm sitting out there. It's 114 and a half degrees outside. I'm sitting out in front of the Enterprise car rental place. After a couple of days before that, I'd been minding my own business, sitting in my own car. Come on, somebody. Not messing with nobody. Somebody runs into the back of me. The devil is a lie, and I'm sitting in front of Enterprise, and I ain't got no driver's license, and they ain't going to give me no car, and I'm sweating, and I'm sitting out there folks wondering what I'm doing out there. And my wife on the other side of town, I say, girl, they ain't going to give me this car. Get back over here. She said, you have to be patient because I'm on the other side of town. <laughs> so finally she shows up and they going, I said, they going, you got to get the car. You got to have the license. They go and give her the license. I'm sitting here thinking, all right, hey, she'll come in here and we figure they fixing to hook us up. We finna get in another, we're going to get in a Tahoe or maybe they'll give us a Suburban, the longer one. You know, we'll drive it around a little while. You know, the, the Lord's about to turn my tragedy into triumph. <laughs> And so she gets the car, and we go, out into, we go out into the parking lot, and they take me over to this vehicle. And it's a go-kart a go with a shell over the top of it. That thing was about that tall. I'm like, y'all don't know her. We can't, this won't work for us. Come on, somebody. They put me in a little old car, you know, and I got to drive this thing for two weeks. Really? I got to drive this thing for two weeks. Not to mention, I don't have driver's license. They're going to let me drive. So now, Dale Earnhardt has to drive. <laughs> And I'm in this, I'm in this go-kart riding around town like this. <laughs> and she, shoo, 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 shoo. I said, there ain't no way this car could go that fast. <laughs> huh? But I'm not in the car long that I realize this is a test. Oh, I'm riding a couple of days earlier. I'm riding like this. You know what I'm saying? I got 20s on that thing. Come on, somebody. And I'm riding in there. And then the Lord said, hey, let me show you how quick I can change some things on you and let you know I'm God. I'm in control. I need to know if you're going to praise me. <laughs> Even if you can't get your hands over your head. Come on, somebody. <laughs> I need to know if you'll honor me right in the middle of it. And I realized, I said, Lord, this is a test, isn't it? It's a test, and believe me, it was. It was, it was. it was frustrating. It was aggravating. Having to go through this whole thing. Because in my mind, I kept saying, in my mind, I wouldn't do How did this happen? I, I, I didn't do anything. I didn't have a wreck. I got ran into. I didn't, I mean, I'm sitting still. How did all this happen? God said, hey, I got this. But I need you to praise me right now for what you're riding in. I need you to tell me you love me and you honor me because you ain't walking. I need you to, I needed to take you back for just a minute to let you know I'm, I'm still God. And don't, don't get too big for your britches, boy. And remember, all the glory belongs to me, and I'm in control of this thing today. I had to walk it out. Some of you right there, right now. But worse. It ain't about a car you got ran into and it's taken away from you for two weeks. Somebody took your car on out. You ain't going to get it back. 
Somebody came and, and served some papers to you and you got to get out of your house. Some man, let me tell you something. Some man came up to one of you and said, I can't, I ain't living with you anymore. Some of you have been through divorce. And see, here's the thing about it is the difference in, in you, it, whether you're going to stay where you are and die in your situation or if you're going to go to the next level that God's trying to take you because no, God knows exactly what you're walking through and, and he knows exactly what you're facing. And see, I'm talking to some woman right now that some guy's walked off and left you and he's gone and he ain't coming back. And but, 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 but because you have a revelation of where you are, you get, you, you get a hold of yourself. And this afternoon, you, if you can, on a Sunday afternoon, if it's possible, and you can't find a florist that's open, go down to Walmart and grab you some of them cheap flowers from Walmart. And you take them and drop them off with a note at the front steps of where he lives right now. And just drop him off a note. And on that note, you say, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for leaving me because if you hadn't left me, I wouldn't be where I am right now. And I am where I am right now in a place of revelation of God revealing to me for my next level of glory. I couldn't have got there if you hadn't left me. Here's some flowers to say thank you. And I'm moving on. I'm moving on. I'm going to that next place. When the water is muddy. It's a trying of my faith. When the water is muddy, it's, it's trying to, will I give God the glory? Because God's using this foolish thing right now to reveal the next level of blessing he has for me in my life. Would you stand with me all over the room today?